Maybe you've discovered this for yourself. Maybe you've begun to realize that most people don't know as much as they think they do. <laughs> In other words, haven't you found that the older you get, the more you realize most people really don't know what they're doing. They go along acting like they know what they're doing, but when you kind of get them in the right situation and predicament, you begin to realize they really don't know what they're doing. And it kind of, at first, may unsettle you or make you bitter or, you know, kind of, if you're younger, um, anti-establishment or something, you know, that you might be real ooh-ah about, you know, and get all uppity and think you're smarter than the older folks, you know, or somehow you're wiser than the generation before. And, you know, I, I laugh because the longer I've been around, the more I realize, A, most people don't know what they're doing, B, everyone is more of a sinner than they'll admit, C, God is bigger than we ever thought of, and he keeps getting more and more so, the more you know about him, the more you realize you really don't know anything about him, because <laughs> he's bigger and greater than anything we ever imagined, and keeps going beyond that, even more so, to degrees that we never even thought of, or can conceive of. So it's always amazing to me how our learning process, God is constantly revealing we know less than we think we do, and he is more than we ever imagined. It's kind of interesting that way for me, and I like it, you know, because it makes my day kind of exciting, you know. It kind of throws it into a tizzy sometimes, but kind of makes it exciting in a way that I know I have no idea what may happen next. It's kind of like with today, I'm getting ready to go out on a job, you know, and to help gentlemen bid it out and work on it and do these things and it's kind of like you know you, you get that angst and that anxiety or that anticipation that kind of like energy level that goes up because you're like oh wow get this ready get that ready get that ready and you're all ready you got everything prepared and then God could say nope and you fold it all up and put it away and for me it's cool <laughs> and we'll see what happens because who knows it may open up doors and it may not. But the one thing I do know is that every time that I've asked God anything specific, He's always answered me. That all I needed to do was to ask Him and then to wait for His answer. And He's never failed me. So, I don't know about you, but for me, I would rather turn to God and get my answers from Him than to turn to man who thinks they know what they're doing and nine times out of ten don't have a clue what's going on. The only wise God, our Savior, Christ Jesus, who is God, is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. In other words, Jesus has become for us our righteousness. He's become for us our wisdom. He's become for us our sanctification and he's become for us our redemption. He's all those things for us. Cool. Canst thou by searching find out God? In other words, if you just look for him, could you find him unless he reveals himself? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What can you do? Deeper than hell. What can you know? We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. The mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. In other words, God hid from the beginning the very fact that Jesus was the creator, so that creation would not know that it was him and that the principalities and powers that are in heaven would not recognize him when he came and mistake the purpose for which he was dying and setting his life down for us, laying it down for our salvation, so that they would be rendered powerless and we would be brought into sanctification 
It really gets uh, like kind of deep, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like I'm sitting here talking about it and I'm going, well, you know, that could bring up a whole 30,000 different other questions out here, you know, that you go, well, why would God want to do that? Or why would God have to do that? Or does God have to do that? Or does he just want to do that? Or does he do it because he's trying to show something? Or is he trying to teach something? Or is he trying to reveal something? So, in a way, there's some things we really... <laughs> Eh, might not be really all that into because we don't understand completely the principalities and powers in heavenly places and when you say you do <laughs> you aren't there so right <laughs> you're just a man you're not a power and you're not a principality but God has revealed that in time two different people that he's revealed them to us that have been there and they shared with us like Paul and spoken to us of those things that are happening in heaven that causes effect here on earth that God rendered powerless against us because now we have to wrestle against those things but we don't have to succumb to them where before Jesus died we were powerless to protect ourselves God had to intervene now God has intervened in a complete way that our salvation has been made known unto the heavens and that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ that's protecting us and guiding us and leading us every day. It gets kind of deep, but it basically boils down to we don't know what's going on. He knows what's going on. All you got to do is ask him. <laughs> Get it? Got it? No? Okay, don't worry about it. The bottom line is this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and abrades not, and it shall be given him. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Ask for wisdom. That's all. Just ask God. He gives it freely. It's always peaceable. It's always loving. It's always caring. It's always merciful. It's always grace for grace, mercy for mercy. It's always forgiving. It's always loving. That's how you can recognize it. It's basically God choosing to reveal himself to a person. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom is as it said in the beginning Jesus himself he has become wisdom unto us so all we need to do really is look to him ask him let him tell us let him speak to us let him intercede for us let him be our all sufficiency because that's what he is and that's what grace does it is all sufficient for our needs so every day all we need to do is turn to him talk to him walk with him let him lead and then you can kind of kick back you know and just go you know I used to think I had this 20-year plan that didn't work out I used to think I had this 10-year plan that didn't work out then I had this five-year plan that didn't work out then I had this five-minute plan that ain't working out you know what Jesus said Sufficient is the day and the worries thereof. Don't worry about tomorrow, for how do you know what tomorrow will bring? He said, can you increase the very hairs on your head, or can you count them or name them? No, of course not. So, as the Lord leads, or <laughs> as it says, if the Lord allow us another day, then we say we may do those things. So really, we need to leave it in God's hands, our future, as well as our present. Because the wind bloweth whither it will, you neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. And at any moment, you could be raptured or you could drop dead. Or you could get some information that might kind of bum you out. Or cheer you up. I won the lottery. <laughs> or, Jesus, is that you? Wow, he talks on the phone. <laughs> and your smartphone might make you smart. What do you have on your smartphone? It's the Bible. Cool. You can read it. <laughs> so the reality is, is every moment by moment is a precious time that you could have with God, walking with Him and fellowshipping with Him all through the day. And then at night when you fall asleep, He's taking care of you too. So I guess the bottom line is commune with your God. If you have a question, ask Him. If you have a problem, talk to Him. If you need something, go to Him. He is your all-sufficiency.